Hey everyone, welcome into this last video on the lecture series on hyperbolic functions. In this lecture video, we'd like to compute some antiderivatives using our newfound knowledge of the derivatives of the arc functions. So um, I'm going to first write down a table of derivatives, and then we can use these to make some antiderivatives. So remember, I'm just going to write these down. You should be able to compute all of these yourselves, okay? So cinch inverse of x, I'll write them as inverse functions this time. The derivative of this one is 1 over the square root 1 plus x squared. The derivative with respect to x of cosh inverse is very similar, but it's the uh, ratio 1 over the square root x squared minus 1. You can write this as 1 over x squared plus 1 if you want. The derivative of tanch inverse of x. This one is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. That's a really important one, so make sure you can work that one out if you haven't already. And then we have a um, couple of uh, th these all transfer then into integrals, right? So antiderivatives. So what we learn also when we compute these derivatives is that the antiderivative of something like 1 over uh, square root of x squared plus 1 dx, this ends up being the inverse cinch function plus c always, right? Same thing here, antiderivative of 1 over square root x squared minus 1 dx. This is going to end up being inverse cosh of x plus c. And then finally, the antiderivative of something like 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. This is then the arctanch function, right? So tangent hyperbolic inverse plus c. So there are, of course, three more versions of each of these. So there is cosecant hyperbolic, secant hyperbolic, cotangent hyperbolic. So you should be able to work those out as well. All right. Now we're going to, we're just going to use these ones for, for this uh, video here where we compute a couple of antiderivatives. Mostly we want to focus on these right here. All right. Here's our first example. This is the integral from four to six of one over the square root of t squared minus nine dt. When we look at this, we want to know which of the, those formulas that we just wrote down is going to be the one that we're going to want to use. And when we compare, it looks like right here, it looks like um, it's going to be inverse cosh, right? Because this is one over x squared minus one all under a square root. So when we go back to this, we need to try to get it to be something squared minus one. And to do that, what we have to do is factor out this nine from the whole thing. So the first step here is to write down our integral. This is the integral from four to six, one over. Now when we factor out a nine from everything, it comes out of the root, it becomes a square root of nine, which is three. And then I'm gonna kind of group this. This is gonna be t squared over nine, right? But t squared over nine is t over three quantity squared minus one dt. All right, and at this point, now we're ready to try to do our u sub, right? So what, what should our u be? Well, just based on the way this looks and based on what we just looked at, we want to make our u, uh, our u equal to t over 3. And once we make a choice of u, as we know, we do not get to choose our du. So now we just compute. du is the differential uh, of u, so it's got to be the derivative, 1 third times dt. And we ask, do we have everything that we need, right? So um, let's compare. I get out my highlighter. U is equal to t over three. That's good. That's going right there, right? So now that that's a that's going to become a u squared. Um, one over three dt. Do we have it? One over three dt. Sure do, right? So that all becomes du, and so this is all great, right? But at this point, we have to remember that we we have to also change our boundaries, right? We have to change our boundaries. So when u, uh, sorry, when t is equal to six our u is equal to 6 over 3, or 2. So our upper bound is 2. And similarly, when t is equal to 4, u is equal to 4 thirds. All right, so our new boundaries are from 4 thirds to 2. All right, let's rewrite our integral then. So this integral becomes the integral from 4 thirds to 2, 1 over square root u squared minus 1 du. And as we know, we set this up so that this would be the inverse cosh, right? So this becomes just fundamental theorem of calculus. This is arc cosh of u evaluated at these boundary points, so 4 thirds and 2. And of course, we just plug these in, right? So this is arc cosh of 2 minus arc cosh of 4 thirds. And at this point, we should remember that our arc cosh function, so I'll write it over here, arc cosh function of u in this case, 
is equal to the natural log of u minus the square root of u squared minus 1. Sorry, u plus the square root of u squared minus 1 inside of a natural log, right? And so let's plug these in and see what we get, right? So we get the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 4 minus 1 minus the natural log of 4 thirds plus the square root of 16 ninths minus 1. And then we just carefully compute this. So this is natural log of 2 plus root 3 minus the natural log of, this is 4 thirds, and this is going to be um, 16 minus 9 is 7, so this will be square root of 7 thirds. And altogether, I'm going to combine this just a little bit more. This is log of 2 plus root 3 minus the log of 4 plus root 7 over 3. And of course, then there's a quotient rule for logs, and so we can write this number, this final number, as um, this log of this term divided by this one, but that's going to be a reciprocal, right? So this is going to be log of 6 plus 3 root 3 divided by 4 plus root 7. And there we go. That's our answer to that first integral. All right, and then you can compute that as a, as a decimal, uh, rounded off, but in general, this is the exact answer. This is the one that we want. We want the exact answer. And that's just a number, right? So that's the antiderivative, or that's the definite integral of this function right here. All right, on to the next one. This one is the integral of e to the x over 1 minus e to the 2x. So here, the first thing I'm going to notice is that e to the 2x is the same as e to the x quantity squared. So we can rewrite this like that. This is e to the x over 1 minus e to the x quantity squared dx. And now we have an idea of how to make our u sub, right? So this looks like a good place to put our u. So let's let u equal e to the x. As we said in the last example, you don't get to choose your du. You just get it, get it, right? It's the derivative, but it's e to the x dx. And then we get out our highlighter to make sure we've got everything we want. Our u goes here. Our du is going to encapsulate all of that, right? So it simplifies. And what do we end up with? Well, this is just going to be uh, integral 1 over 1 minus u squared du. And this is exactly the derivative of arctanch, right? So this one becomes arctanch of u plus c. Obviously, we have to plug back in what our u is, right? So u's got to go back in. Our u is e to the x. So um, let's write this down. This is then arc tanch of e to the x plus c. We can leave it like this. I'm happy with this, actually. This is good. But there is one more thing that we could do, since this is kind of review as well as computing of integrals. Remember that the arctanch function of x is equal to 1 half of the natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. All right, And so then that would mean that our antiderivative here is equivalent to 1 half, if we want to get everything in terms of logs, right? Logs and exponentials. It's equivalent to 1 half of the natural log of 1 plus e to the x over 1 minus e to the x, all plus c. And these are the same. They're exactly the same, so either one is fine. All right? So that's just plugging in the definition of arctanch. But you have to have the plus c. It's got to be there. All right. I've got one more example. This one's very similar to the first one, um, but it's obviously a little bit different. So this one we need to kind of, we've got the plus 1. We need to group this all together. So this whole thing can be written as the integral from 0 to 1, 1 over the square root. If you group the square, this becomes 4t quantity squared plus 1 dt. And we're probably seeing exactly how this works up to this point, right? All we have for tools are our u subs. And now um, we have some formulas for derivatives that are new. But we're going to let our u equal 4t. And at this point, our du has to be 4 dt. This time we don't have the 4, so we need to put it there times, right? And then if we multiply by 4 on the inside, we have to divide outside. Just for the sake of following the same steps, we get our highlighter out. That part's going to be right. And our du, because of the work we just did, we've got it, right? So that goes there. And we have to also, of course, change our bounds once we're happy with our u sub. So when t is equal to 1, u is equal to 4. And when t is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. All right, so this goes from 0 to 4 instead of 0 to 1. And at this point, we rewrite our integral. 1 fourth 
integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over square root u squared plus 1 du. And of course, this is the derivative of arc cinch. So this becomes 1 fourth arc cinch of u, where we plug in our bounds, 0 and 4. All right, now this because we keep going, right? Just keep plugging in. This becomes now 1 fourth. Um, remember, I'm going to use the log formula, although you might remember arc. Well, let's just write it out first, and then I'll, com I'll convert it to logs. This is arc cinch of 4 minus 1 fourth arc cinch of 0. And before we even do any substituting, I hope you remember that cinch of 0 is 0, right? So if cinch of 0 is 0, then arc cinch of 0 is also 0. So that's gone. Um, and we just have to compute this, right? So this is the only thing that's remaining to be computed to be computed, TBC, all right? <clears throat> and we remember that the arc cinch function of u, all right, is equal to the log of u plus square root u squared plus one. And so that's what gets, we get, we plug in our four for that, right? And so we get at this point, our answer, this is just like a side note to remind us, our answer to the integral is that it's equal to one fourth natural log of four plus the square root of 17. All right, 4 squared plus 1 is 17. And so that's it. We can't do any better than that, right? So there's a couple examples of computing integrals using the hyperbolic trig functions.